Okay, so in, in the Voluspa is probably the most definitive understanding of the creation of the cosmos according to the uh, Germanic tribes. And so I'm going to go ahead and teach that to you. And to anybody who's at all interested in uh, earth wisdom, at all interested in magic, in energy magic, in uh, just simply understanding indigenous earth wisdom that has an unbroken connection into prehistory. This is, in my opinion, one of the most important texts that we can read. You're going to learn the nature of all the different types of beings, all the different types of entities that we hear about uh, in pre-Roman, uh, pre pre-Christian Europe. And more importantly, we're going to understand how we can interact with that. Uh, there are things in here that I don't think that a lot of us have understood. There's a phrase in here that says, know you as yet or what? Uh, roughly translated, it means, do you get it yet or what? And so every time that that question is asked, it means that what has just been shared with you is extremely important, extremely dense uh, truths that cannot simply be understood you know, whimsically, or you can't just look at it uh, on a surface level. You really have to get into it and understand it. So we're going to do that here today. So let's go ahead and get started. You wish me to tell the ancient tales, O father of seers, the oldest I know. O father of seers is obviously Woden or Odin. Woden means the essence of Wod. Wod uh, is very hard to translate, but it can be translated as um, shamanic ecstasy. It's, it's the pure wisdom that comes from the shamanic state of being, the state of being able to tap directly into the power of the universe. It, it corresponds with the upper centers in the human body. Uh, this would be Wod, what we would call the third eye. That is, that is the, where the Wod of the human being interfaces with manifested reality. So, O Father of Seers is Woden. Now, the speaker says here, I remember giants born in the foretime, they who long ago nurtured me. So, this staff carrier uh, woman, this wisdom woman, is obviously a giant. So, she is uh, a Jotun, an Etten, a giant, a primordial force, uh, the first of the female staff carriers. And it is through this power that the female staff carriers would gain their ability to translate the wisdom uh, or to channel the information from the spirit world. The Norns are giants that create what we call now the law of weird. The word weird is the same word when we use it today, and we use it every day. Who doesn't say weird? That's weird. Who doesn't say that on a daily basis? Uh, that gives you an idea of how powerful this law is. So you have the past, which is Urd, and then you have the present, which is coming into being, and then you have the future, which is debt. The Urd is the patterns from which all Orlog, or Dharma, all destiny arise. So these are the goddesses of destiny, which are so powerful they control even the celestial gods, the Aesir. From those, those patterns in Urd, the, we experience things in the present which we must live out. We must live them out, because they're already uh, in that pattern of origin. We must live it out in the present. Every moment is coming into being. There's no such thing as the present. It's always moving into the future. This moment that I'm saying now, this word I'm saying now, now is in the past, it's now Urd. So then you have the future which has not come into being and it is debt. Every choice, every action, every thought that we experience in present time creates patterns 
in Ur, which must be fulfilled in the present in the future, when it's debt. So it's very similar to the uh, to the Hindu version of karma, although it's a little more complex than that. So now now we have destiny. Now we have orlog, uh, which means origin law. The law of origin has now come into being. should fashion a host of dwarfs from Brimer's blood and the limbs of the dead. Brimer is another word for the giant Emir, the, uh, the giant whose body was dismantled by Odin, Vili, and Ve to help delineate uh, this external manifested universe so that we can perceive it. So, dwarves. Now, dwarves again are not little people. They're not tiny little creatures that run around. Now we're going to talk about the nature of what dwarves are. So if you ever had any doubt of what, what a dwarf is, now we're going to find out what they are. There was Force Sucker, Master of Dwarves. A dwarf whose, whose only job is to siphon life force energy from the universe and bring it into some kind of uh, knowledge or self-awareness that we humans can then use. Now the dwarves are the master of magic. They create everything. So it is with our dwarf nature, which is located here in the naval center, the dwarf nature through which we have the power to create our own environment. So there are no victims in this uh, play of life. We create it all. What our subconscious, which is our, our, our dwarf nature, focuses on, that is what we literally create. have a direct connection to the human subconscious, the uh, foundation from which the idea of being human is, comes from the dwarf nature. So, now we get into something very interesting. From one such train drew forth in the hall three Acer, powerful, compassionate, they found on the earth the ash and the alder, of little power, indeterminate. Odin, Woden, gave them spirit. Honer, discernment. Loder gave them blood and divine light. So, here's something very interesting. So here it says, From one such train of dwarves drew forth in the hall three Aesir powerful compassionate, so it means that the powers of Woden, Will and Whale, Odin, Vili, and Ve, are the highest evolution of the dwarf nature. They are the highest evolution of the human uh, being. And it is this power, it says right here, this power, three Aesir, they found on the earth the ash and the alder of little power indeterminate. So that means that here you have these bipedal hominids walking around. Um, they're, you know, they're basically very smart uh, animals, but that's what they are. They're just very smart animals. And, and this power of shamanic awareness, of, of intent, and this power of spiritual perception sees this being and says, this is a being that we can inhabit. This is a being that we can, we can take up. It, right now it has little power, but we can give it power. So it's the power of Woden, Will, and Whale, Odin, Vili, and Ve, that gives these bipedal hominids the ability to become deities. Because that's exactly what Woden, Will, and Whale are. They are deities that, that through lots of, of power became deities. They were dwarves that became um, um, the highest of divinity. So this is a, a universe that is in the process of evolution. That's the whole point of it coming into being, is that it's evolving. You know, other religions will say that God learns over time. You know, that God is, you know, the Hindus will say that, that uh, the Supreme Being created the universe so that it could experience itself and grow. It's exactly what we see here in, in, a, in a very different um, understanding, but we're still talking about the same thing. The power of Woden, Will, and Whale, Odin, Vili, and Ve, is the power of uh, divine evolution. And that's why human beings are the highest beings, potentially the highest beings in the universe. We're not acting that way now, but we have that potential.